Howdy, this is Lemmy with Revzilla TV, here to talk to you today about how to ride a motorcycle. I remember when I first started learning to ride, I was so excited to figure out what it was that I was doing. But I didn't have anybody to show me the ropes. I made a lot of mistakes, and while that's a valid way to learn, it's not the most efficient way to figure out how to safely move down the road in a motorcycle. Now, I'm not gonna tell each and every one of you what you need to stay safe, but things to think about are things like continuing education, personal protective equipment, as well as a big healthy dollop of common sense. Now let's talk for just a moment here about that common sense. I want you to listen to things I have to say. I've ridden a gajillion miles and I've taught plenty of people how to ride successfully. But ultimately, I'm just some guy from the internet. Use your noodle when you get out there on your motorcycle. So let's talk about how this video is actually going to progress. We're going to talk about a couple things. We're going to show you what the controls on a motorcycle actually do and how they differ from the controls on a car. The other thing we're going to show you too is how to physically get the motorcycle started up safely. And then from there, we're going to also show you how to get the motorcycle rolling down the road. Of course, we can't cover every single nuance of riding a motorcycle, but these are the basic nuts and bolts as far as actually getting the bike rolling down the road, including stuff like clutch and throttle interplay, which has a lot of people a little bit confused, especially if they've never driven a manual transmission vehicle. Now, I want to get onto this motorcycle, but first, I got to get my duds on. You can't ride a bike if you don't look fly. Styling and profiling. Now check out my final trick. What? You didn't think we were gonna learn to ride a motorcycle on that barge, did you? Instead, we've got something a little bit more learner friendly here. Let me swing a leg over this baby. Okay, before we get moving at all, let's talk about some of the controls on a motorcycle. Now, I'm gonna assume that most of you are reasonably familiar with a car. Riding a motorcycle is similar to driving around in a car in some ways in that you are using both of your hands and both of your feet, but it's also different in a lot of ways too. So let's start at the right foot and we'll work our way over to the other side of the bike and we'll talk about some of the controls on a bike and what's similar and what's different from the stuff on an automobile. Let's start at the right foot down here. Your right foot is going to control the rear brake. That's right, on a motorcycle your brakes are actually split. Instead of in a car where you have full-on braking power from one pedal, there's actually two independently controlled brakes on a motorcycle. Right foot, rear brake. Moving up to my right hand, my right hand also controls a brake. By hitting this lever, I control the front brake of the motorcycle. This is kind of important because the front brake on most modern motorcycles handles about 80% of the braking duty, so your right hand's job is pretty important. Your right hand does some other things as well though. There's some other stuff on the control pod you can see here that your right hand is in charge of. One of them is the engine start and stop switch. Unlike a car, a motorcycle actually has two ways of getting the power to the ignition. One is through the key, but the other one is this engine on off switch. One of the other differences between a car and a motorcycle too is the starter button you can see down here. That's something else your right hand is gonna be in charge of. Instead of in a car where you would insert the key and then there's a spring-loaded part at the end of the ignition that's gonna actually start the vehicle, a motorcycle splits that up. You have a start button off to the side and your right hand is gonna be responsible for popping that start button on and off. The other big thing that your right hand does is controls the throttle. By twisting the grip like this, you actuate the throttle on the motorcycle. This is analogous to a gas pedal on a car. It raises the speed of the engine and also makes you go a little bit faster if you're pouring on the coal. Let's move over to the left hand. Related to the throttle on your left hand is the clutch. Those of you who have driven a car with a manual transmission can probably appreciate that the clutch is not like a light switch. It's not on off. There's some finesse and grace that has to be used. Your left hand, like your right hand, also has some more minor duties too. Your low and high beam switch are over here on the left control pod. And the other thing you'll see here too is your horn. If you need to actuate your horn, honk honk, that's how you're going to do it. One of the other things I'd like to bring to your attention too is the turn signal mechanism. Turn signals on a motorcycle are a little bit different than they are on a car. On most motorcycles, except for super high-end stuff, the turn signals are not self-canceling, meaning when you turn the turn signal on, once you're done making your turn, you have to turn it back off. So the directionals on most bikes are pretty standard. You're gonna move the switch either to the left or to the right in order to turn the turn signal on. And then most bikes have a feature called push to cancel. You're gonna push the button straight in, and that's how you turn the turn signal off. 
Now wrapping things up, we have the left foot. Your left foot is gonna handle shifting duties for the transmission. Those of you who have driven a manual transmission car, a bike should be reasonably familiar to you. You have to select what gear it is that you're actually in. One of the differences between an automotive transmission and a motorcycle transmission though, is that a motorcycle transmission typically is a sequential manual transmission. Whereas in a car you could make say a 2-4 shift or a 3-5 shift because you can stop off at neutral between every gear, a motorcycle doesn't allow that. You have to numerically go through each gear. So you don't necessarily have to engage a gear on a motorcycle if you wanted to do say a 4-2 downshift, but you do have to actually pass through it in order to get the shifter where you're going. One of the other interesting parts of a motorcycle I think a lot of people struggle with is the fact that neutral is in between first and second gears. Most modern motorcycles that are foot shift have a ratcheting mechanism, and the ratcheting mechanism only lets you move one gear at a time. You have to reset your foot in order to get multiple gear changes. The exception to this rule, of course, is neutral. Neutral's kind of a strange position. It sits between first and second gear in the actual swing of the gear shift lever. That's the one gear that you can actually come through and hit more than one gear with a single movement of your foot. Now I recognize this probably sounds a little bit confusing, and it is, but I promise you as soon as you sit down on a motorcycle and play around with the gear shift lever for just a little bit, inside of a very short period you'll understand exactly what it is that I'm talking about. Now that I've shown you the controls, let's get to the fun part. Let's fire this bike up. First though, let me grab a helmet and gloves and get geared up. All right, we're getting close. I'm so excited and I hope you are too. Now before we get rolling here, I have a couple of caveats for you. The first is this. I'm assuming everybody is starting on a modern fuel-injected motorcycle, because most people are. If you have an older bike, something with carburetors or petcocks or perhaps a kicker on it, the starting sequence might be entirely different. If you're in that boat, either check your owner's manual for a little bit more information on how to get it started, or talk to a buddy who knows a little bit more about your bike than you do. The rest of you, if you follow along, you should be all set. The second caveat I have for you, I'm going to show you a sequence of steps. If you use this sequence of steps on just about any modern motorcycle, you should be able to get it rolling. You may find that one or two of the steps is superfluous for your bike. The reason I'm showing you all of these steps though is because if you follow them, it should get just about any modern motorcycle rolling regardless of who manufactured the bike. The first thing I like to do is get the side stand up. Some bikes have a sensor or a switch that will prevent you from starting up the bike if the stand is down. The next thing I like to do from this point is to turn the ignition on. I now have the key switch on on this motorcycle, and at the same time, I'm also going to make sure I have power going to the ignition using the engine stop switch. That's on as well as you can see. From here, I like to make sure that the bike is in neutral. Some bikes won't let you start them if they're not in neutral. Some bikes have a neutral indicator, which you can see here, and the other good way to check is to roll the bike back and forth. If you can roll it back and forth without the clutch pulled in, you're in neutral. From here, I'm going to pull the clutch in and I'm going to hit the starter button until the engine catches. So as you can see, getting the bike started really is very simple as long as you follow the correct sequence. Now before we actually get out on the road, I want to show you something that I think is a sticking point for a lot of beginners. I also want to show it to you before we start moving too because I can exaggerate my movements a little bit and you can really get a good idea for what it is that I'm doing here. Specifically, I'm speaking about the interplay between the throttle and the clutch. I like to think of the two as a seesaw. If you're using throttle, you're usually coming off of the clutch. If you're coming onto the clutch, you're usually coming off of the throttle. They work in tandem with each other, sort of opposite of one another. Let me show you exactly what I mean. So I'm going to pull the clutch in, put this bike down into first gear. At this point, I'm going to start letting the, the clutch go, and I'm going to bring the throttle speed up. You're going to hear the engine RPMs rise, and you'll also notice the bike's going to start to pull itself forward. Here, watch. Clutch is coming out, throttle is on, and I'm pulling forward. Let me show you again. I'm gonna take the clutch and start releasing it. At the same time, I'm twisting my wrist just a little bit. You can hear the engine moving a little bit faster, and you can see the bike start to pull itself. Now this relationship between clutch and throttle can be kind of tricky. Don't get down on yourself if you don't learn it right out of the gate. It's the thing that most learners probably have to spend the most time working on, that very delicate relationship between the clutch and the throttle. So at this point, I think you probably understand that. Let me show you what it looks like out on the road. All right, it's game time. We're ready to ride a motorcycle. I'm gonna start off just like I showed you. I'm gonna pull this clutch in, down into first gear, and now you're gonna notice me releasing the clutch and then coming on with the gas. Boom, we're underway. One of the things I want you to notice is how fast I picked up my foot over there. Sometimes rookies have this instinct to keep their feet down to help keep their balance. It can be dangerous if you have a foot come down while the bike's at speed. So make a conscious effort to get your feet up as soon as it's practical. Now I'm getting ready to come to a stop here. So what I'm gonna do is the reverse of what we just did. Clutch in, throttle off, and brake smoothly to a stop. At this point, 
that's it. This is how you ride a motorcycle. Now I want to duplicate this so you can see one more time exactly what I'm doing, but I also want to throw a curveball in there too. I'm actually going to shift gears. I'm going to get into a faster forward gear. Now as anybody who's ever driven a manual transmission car can tell you, it's easier to, to shift into gears that are higher speed. Once you have a little speed under your belt, it becomes just a little bit simpler in order to shift your gears smoothly. It's not quite as difficult as taking off. I'll show you what I'm talking about right now. So pull that clutch in, click down into first, and now I'm gonna slowly let my clutch out and come on with the gas. And look at that, now we're rolling again. Now here's the part I want you to pay attention to. The engine RPMs are coming up. You can hear the engines getting a little bit noisy. That means that it's time to shift. So I'm gonna pull the clutch in, make my shift, and come back on with the throttle. I'm now in second gear. We're riding a motorcycle. You have just about all the information you need right now to figure out if this might be something you can do. And my bet is that you can. Riding a motorcycle is easy and it's a whole lot of fun. Now you're at the stage of your journey where you're ready for a little bit more education and you can get it over at Common Tread. Check out the article I wrote that accompanies this video on how to ride a motorcycle. I also want you to check out some of the other articles by some of our other authors. There's a lot of really great opinions there. Now if you haven't seen any of our other videos, let me hit you with my catchphrase. I'm Lemmy and I'm out of here.